Welcome to the 15th chapter of the book of Isaiah. This chapter is the first chapter we meet that actually has a sort of a date. Uh, it doesn't tell us where we're at in time, but it says that after uh, three years, all these things will have taken place. So it's basically uh, not something that was in the future that I see, unless it was hidden in Isaiah's description of what is going to happen to Moab. Moab, it's a uh, people that lived to the east of the Dead Sea. Here we have Jerusalem up here, so they just come across, and then you would be in Moab. The uh, rest of the information that we receive about Moab will occur in the 16th chapter, and that's where in verse 14 it'll say that uh, all these things will happen within three years. Uh, before I forget, uh, the last video we went through, I mentioned all the pronouns, and I wanted to show you our book, uh, Analytical Lexicon of the uh, Apostolic Bible. Now, what's interesting and good about this is inside we have uh, all the words in the Apostolic Bible listed by number. So if you see a number above the word, all you do is go in here and look, and then you go and find that word in alphabetical order. It's the only uh, analytical lexicon I've seen like that. Most of them have all the words here. It's all in alphabetical order. Unless you really know Greek well, it, it wouldn't be a whole lot of a help. Um, but this uh, what, reason that it's, it's a good help is because when you get to verbs, you wouldn't know if it was talking about a male or a female, past, present, all kinds of things that uh, the book would show you what it is because Greek is a very descriptive uh, language more so than English. It would take English three or four words. Uh, the man uh, uh, went and or he might have went. All that would be in one Greek word. Wouldn't have a, a man might have went, which is four words. So uh, it's a really great book. And then all the pronouns, it tells you if they're masculine, or if it's uh, singular or plural, basically in the second person uh, in English, we have you. So if it was, uh, if I was in one room and you were in the other room and you didn't know who was in here and I said, uh, you go to the store, you wouldn't know if I was talking to one person or three people. Could say, you go to the store to all three of them. So uh, here you, with that book, you can see, uh, you can look at it. It's very uh, surprising. A lot of times we, we think is in the singular is actually in the plural. Now, the King James did have an advantage there, and they did uh, use ye and thou and uh, these uh, antiquarian words that we no longer use. But so anyway, uh, that book is available on our bookstore. Now, going back uh, to Moab, Moab, uh, the Moabites were a people that when uh, basically first mentions them uh, of any importance is when the Israelites were leaving Egypt and they were coming around and they came uh, uh, down east, uh, west here from Egypt, and they came around, and they went around uh, Moab. They didn't go through Moab and went up into Ammon and attacked and uh, made it across to Jericho uh, in the book of uh, Joshua. So uh, the Israelites um, bypassed it, and then its next mention is in the book of Judges, where the judge Ehud uh, came over and stabbed Eglon, the king of Moab, who was uh, <clears throat> uh, ruling a lot of the Jews. The Jew, there was no Jewish tribe that was covering this area. Right north of this, uh, there were, but um, it was a Naphtali, and I'm, I'm not sure. But um, <clears throat> so this uh, Ehud was uh, stabbed by. Uh, I mean, uh, Eglon was stabbed by Eg, uh, Ehud. And then the next place was in the book of Ruth. We find that Ruth was a Moabitess. Um, when her um, mother-in-law, Naomi, came across uh, fleeing from Israel because it was a bad famine, she went into Moab in the, with her two sons, and they married, and both of the sons died. Ruth was the one Moabitess that went back with Naomi. And... 
um, I think they went to Bethlehem, if I'm not mistaken, because then um, Ruth had uh, the a baby. It was um, I should have forgot to look it up. It was I think Jesse. I think it was a uh, Boaz. She married Boaz. I think they had. Did they ever had Jesse, or was Jesse was a grandson? Where that means that David was actually a part of Moabite. He had some Moabite blood in him from uh, Ruth. Then later, uh, Moab uh, is important because of uh, different wars against the Moabites and the uh, Israel, and there was a stone that was found that goes back to this period of time they called the Moabite stone or the Mesha steel. And Mesha was the king of Moab and on there it mentions a battle with Omri, king of Israel. So uh, the Moabites are, they didn't last very long though afterwards. They were like mentioned here in three years uh, they, they were destroyed. Their god was Chemosh uh, uh, and he was, this god was uh, in Deban. It mentions here uh, as a, a shrine to the god. It, uh, it was probably to Chemosh. And then uh, Deban or Debon was the capital. And there was a river there. And it was, King James called it Demon, although in the Greek, as we see, it's still, it's spelt the same uh, in three places. And uh, two of, uh, one of them is Debon. The city is called Debon. Uh, but the, somehow the King James calls the uh, stream or whatever it is, uh, demon. So it's a little bit of a confusion if you have a King James or the Apostolic Bible because the Greek has a spelling for debon. We'll, we'll see that here in a few minutes as we go uh, into our text, which we will now. It begins, the word against Moab. The land of Moab shall be destroyed by Nyctos by night. Uh, for by night the wall of the land of Moab shall be destroyed. Fret for them, for even Debon shall be destroyed. There it is, Debon. And where your shrine is, and that was the shrine to Chemosh. There you shall ascend to weep. Upon Nebo of the land of Moab shriek. Nebo uh, Nabav here in the Greek, Nebo was the mountain that Moses went up to view the promised land in Moab. Upon every kephalis, cephalic, had his baldness, all arms being mutilated. Now, they cut their hair and they probably cut themselves uh, being attacked. Hopefully that this god Shemosh would deliver them. In their plateas, a plat, a square plate, the derivative, uh, you grid on sacus, sackcloth, almost a transliteration, and lament upon her roofs. And in her plateas, and in her streets, all shriek with weeping in the imperative because of what's coming to Moab. For Heshban and Elela have cried out unto Jahaz, their sound was heard. Now let's go back to the to the map here. And, oops, wrong one. There it is. So Heshbon is up here and Jahaz, it was heard. So the uh, northern part of Moab, it's talking about right there. On account of this, the loin of the land of Moab yells, Her soul shall know. The heart of the land of Moab yells in her unto uh, Zigor in Greek, or uh, Zor. And um, Zor was the southernmost city of Moab. And that was one of the cities that were spared uh, when Lot left uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, which were on the other side of the Dead Sea towards Israel. For it is as a three-year-old heifer. I guess it uh, jumps around, runs around young. But upon the ascent of Luith, uh, they shall ascend to you weeping by the way of Horo name. Uh, by the way of Horo name, she yells, defeat and quaking. This um, Luith 
was only mentioned uh, in Israel and Jeremiah and the Horan name. They're fairly close to each other with some type of a ravine close by. The water of Nimrim shall be desolate. And Nimrim was a re- some type of a, a, a stream that was mentioned twice. Also, Israel, uh, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. Uh, Edor, we have hydro from that derivative. Seismos, a seismic quaking. Erimon, a hermit, comes from that. And then in her grass, hortos, horticulture, her grass shall fail, for there will not be uh, green grass. Chloros, we have chloroform, green um, part of a plant. And shall she thus be about to be delivered? No, for I shall bring the Arabians upon the ravine, and they shall take it. So now we see who's coming. Is the Arabians, which are down um, right below uh, here. And the Arabians were uh, could also have uh, been uh, at the very bottom at uh, Yemen, where the queen of Saba, the Sabaeans were, and they were uh, attacking a lot of people also in the uh, Arabian Peninsula. For the yelling joined up with the border of the land of Moab of Eglame and her shrieking. This is the only place that mentions Eglame in the Bible. Her shrieking unto the well of Elim. We don't know where that is. For the water, now see here is Devom uh, in the Greek, the same as up above where it says Demo, uh, Debon, but the King James has it Demon, the King James, is a translation from the Hebrew. And the Hebrew, from what I read, was Devon, so it's kind of an in-between. So this creek, whether it was uh, Demon or Devon, uh, the water of this uh, stream shall be filled with blood. That was their capital. For I shall bring upon Demon or Devon the Arabians, and I will lift away the spir- sperma of Moab, the seed of of Moab. And Ariel, uh, one place it calls Ariel Jerusalem, but that doesn't sound like that has anything to do with this area. Otherwise, we don't know what that is. And uh, the remnant of Adama. And we don't know Adama. I'm sorry, Adama is one of of those cities that were spared, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, with Lot. So basically, uh, we have a geography lesson of the country of Moab in the 15th uh, chapter, but the 16th chapter will go more into uh, what it's all about. And hope you'll join us in 16, where we continue about Moab. And God bless.